We are at the Shoreview Kowalskis and nutritionist Sue Moores is joining us this morning to help us keep our immune system strong. A lot of that deals with food, mm -hmm. but also a couple things that are not food related. Right, two that you can do and put into play is one, physical activity, so important. And we, I think, are gonna start getting cabin fever here pretty soon. If you can get out yeah, every do <laughs> and do some, walking or whatever it doesn't have to be obviously clubs and such are closed but just mm -hmm. walking because exercise will act stimulate and activate immune cells and help them circulate around in your body so super great every day to get some physical activity and then sleep sleep is super important super super um, mm -hmm. because it's re so restorative and if we don't get enough sleep it actually depresses the immune system so it does make you more susceptible to getting ill and if you do get ill not getting enough sleep will take you longer to recover. And sort of the trifecta of it is when you don't get enough sleep, your body craves salty, sugary, fatty mm. foods, and those aren't doing so a good job for nourishing your immune system. And then food and a lot of colors Always you got going food. on over here. Always about color. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that people think a lot about um, vitamin C and zinc. In yes. fact, store shelves are gone of some of those supplements, but I really encourage people to look at the whole food situation because it isn't about just vitamin C and zinc. It's about this whole host of nutrients that all work together mm -hmm. to keep your immune system strong. So you're literally nourishing your immune system by the foods that you choose. That's why we say eat the rainbow, right? Right, and we have the rainbow. It's beautiful. So these foods happen to also be great in vitamin C. Okay. So kiwi and berries and olive, um, those fruits and vegetables that you see here, but zinc is also pre present with the nuts and the seeds and yogurt and meats. Okay. So a little bit, not the rainbow, but also important, zinc. But they have phytonutrients in them too, and some of them are actually antiviral. So all of this plant-based stuff is terrific, and then those nuts and, or, um, excuse me, meat, yogurt is great as well. But the sort of big piece of all of this is keeping your gut strong. Okay. Because about 70% of our immune system sits in and around in our intestinal area. So that's all great and beautiful on the, on the tray, but then we have to put it into a meal for our family. Yes. And that's where you come in with some great recipes for us. There are bacteria in your gut that are good and throw up this barrier, if you will, to illness. And okay. so we've got here some oats and barley and beans and some of those vegetables. And then we've carried them over into those recipes that Perfect. we've talked about. So we've got a breakfast bowl here. And I think a lot of times people think of oatmeal. So that's one of those grains that's really great for feeding the good bacteria in your gut. Yep. But switch it up. Try frica. Barley would be good in there. Sorghum would be good in there. You can try all different to Great. make a breakfast bowl. Yeah. This next one I'm excited about because I love pineapple. Yeah, so that's a pineapple avocado salad and it's a nod to, again, some of these foods that are nourishing mm -hmm. the great um, bacteria that you already have and then that vitamin C and phytonutrients. So it's avocados and pineapple with some mint and a honey lime um, olive oil dressing on it and it's got a little mm. bit of goat cheese on top. So a little savory and sweet there. Yeah, and very easy to make. It really doesn't take very long at all. Perfect, and then for Perfect. everyone who's trying to kind of balance work at home and yes. all that stuff, chili, a good crock pot Chili recipe. and soups, and it brings in the beans and all those things that we want, but it just, it's one and done and you get multiple meals out of it. And everyone's home right now to kind of spend some time making recipes. Absolutely, it's such a prime time to get more people in the kitchen helping out and a great time to discover new foods and really help your young people at home or other people in the house get involved with the food production because food is such a great connector and it's a really wonderful time to learn about new foods, try new foods and just enjoy the time together. Thank you, Sue. And all these recipes are available on care11.com.